Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 438 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics not quite arriving in stores on Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. I'm Kevin Hickey coming to you from 60 meters below the surface of Stadium Comics in the Stadium Comics self-isolation bunker. Uh, and with me, as always, is our co-host, Mr. Ricky Lima. Ricky, say hello. Hello, what's going on? I'm coming to you from, I don't know, six feet in the ground, I guess. Here we are. <laughs> Not dead, but a potato. So. You know, uh, people have asked me, what's what's the best survival strategy for uh, getting through this coronavirus uh, pandemic that we're dealing with? And I've said, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I think it's what Ricky does. Just, you know, turn into a potato and there bury you yourself under the ground and just wait it out. That's really all you need. It's pretty comfy in the ground, and uh, I'm, I'm I having a good time. I assume you're getting all the nutrients that you need down there? Uh, yeah, you know, I got some cows who are providing some nutrients, you know, a little bit of fertilizer, you know what I'm saying? Nice, nice. Wow, that's that's good, man. I'm glad that you've got it all together for this apocalypse, and uh, uh, let us know how that turns out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, of course... Uh, no new comics, uh, so we've resorted to doing this uh, Unboxing Wednesday show again. Uh, we've been away for a little while. We're back again. This is our third episode since the comics uh, industry kind of went into shutdown mode. And, uh, you know, we figured that um, this is this is our little version of, of a protest. Until the comics come back, damn it, we're going to keep filming episodes. And uh, not quite like as effective as a hunger strike or anything like that. I mean, really, we're just putting content out there, but The comic industry, if you want us to stop, you need to start producing comics again. And virus, you need to go away. And then oh, we'll, yeah. we'll stop coming again, right? Yeah, totally. That virus definitely needs to go away. I need to get my life back. I need my body back. I need, I need it all. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this is brought to you by the fine folks at Stadium Comics, which includes myself and Rob and sometimes Ricky and uh, all of the uh, lovely people that work at our store, such as Alyssa. And, uh, you know, Stadium Comics is a comic shop, and we're trying to survive through this time as well. Uh, one of the things that we did last week is we made available these mystery comic book packs. Um, it was a co comic book care package that we've been shipping out to people. A lot of people took us up on it, so much so that we've only got uh, a limited supply of them left. So if you haven't already uh, taken uh, the opportunity to purchase your set, uh, we strongly advise you to do so before they're all gone. Thought, uh, you know, since we don't have any new comics, I could show you an example of some of the books that are in one of these mystery comic care packages. Do you think that's a good idea, Ricky? I think it definitely is a good idea. I mean, you know, mysteries are fun, but sometimes you want to know what you're well, getting. Well, I mean, uh, the books that I'm going to show you are an example. Uh, the, the the boxes are all different, um, so th there's no guarantee that what I'm going to show is what you're going to get in the box. Uh, but we have mailed out version, you know, some of these comics in each of the boxes that have gone out. So uh, yeah, let's let's show you what we got. So we got. Um, Amazing Spider-Man number one. This is the Stadium Comics uh, exclusive variant tribute to New Mutants 98 uh, art by uh, the one and only Jamal Campbell. Uh, so this was released, um, I think, about two years ago now. It was one of the most successful comic releases we ever did for one of our exclusives. And uh, this, uh, this book is amazing. It's nothing short of amazing. Uh, I think we currently sell it online, just like this, ungraded for for fifteen bucks. 
Um, so it, it's in this $25 Comic Care Mystery Pack. Um, the recent Thor number one from uh, Mr. Donnie Cates. Oh, Ricky, did you get a chance to read this one yet? Yeah, man. It's awesome. I'm loving it. Is truly everything Donny Cates uh, touching turning to gold? Like, what's what's your <laughs> what's your opinion there? Um, I wouldn't say that, but is this your bias as a writer coming in again? Like, you know, no, nah, man. I think Donny Cates is a very good writer, and what he's producing is very cool. Um, but sometimes there's some stinkers. So okay. you know, you I, mean, know I think I think that's true for uh, you know anything that's really good, right? Sometimes exactly. So the best. TV shows have a couple of bad ones. Yeah. So. so Silver Surfer Black was amazing. Uh, Absolute Carnage was, uh, was okay. And uh, this Thor book is wicked. So. All right. Well, Thor book's wicked. That's what counts, right? Um, Secret Wars, issue number one from way back. A little bit of a blast from the past, but uh, awesome if, nonetheless. If I may, Secret Wars was probably my favorite Marvel situation when they were releasing them. I think I picked up every single tie-in, and they were all, like, just crazy and awesome. So Yeah, you dug it, right? Yeah. Nice. Um, a little bit more Liefeld uh, kind of experience in this box with the homage to New Mutants 98, and now Major X issue number one was in this particular box. And then um, We Stand on Guard, issue number one. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, of course, the writer on that. I think that was a six-issue limited series. United States and Robots versus the Patriots of Canada. Great series. Whoa. We got so, really close to uh, reliving that, that book. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of a, little bit of a, a international incident over – uh, masks and respirators coming from the states, but I think uh, Justin Trudeau and Donald Trump have that all sorted out now. So I think we're, all, we're all friends again, uh, which is good. We all need to be friends during this uh, crazy time, right? Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's an example of one of our uh, mystery comic care packages. It's twenty five bucks all in. That includes shipping, uh, so that is uh, really great value when you factor in the shipping. Uh, if you're international, like outside of U.S. and Canada, it's, I think, $30. Pretty shipping. You can pick those up at stadiumcomics.com. Ricky, how many can I put you down for? Uh, put me down for, like, six. Um, All right. And, um, I'll just, add that to, just add that to your tab? Yes, please. All right. All right cool. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on at Stadium Comics uh, as we deal with this uh current pandemic and you know this the shutdown um all comic shops whether they are um allowed to be open or not in their jurisdictions are effectively shut down for new releases um there's no new releases shipping and we'll get into that in a minute we'll do a little bit of an in industry update um so uh we don't have any new releases to sell to people and that's that's our main business at stadium comics is the weekly new releases and uh, you know, pre-orders and uh, subscriber files and pull lists for our customers. So um, we've been having a lot of fun doing these unboxings, of course, uh, in the last uh, little bit. Um, we continue to reach out to our members in store uh, to get them to, um, you know, to make available to them the stuff that's in their pull list that they might not have gotten to pick up before the shutdown happened. So uh, we've been really busy all this past week and the week before, putting together orders for people and shipping them out. Uh, everybody's been really great and really accommodating with that. Um, so uh, again, we can't have people come into the store. So what we're having people do is like, you know, we're sending out like a PayPal invoice or whatever. Uh, and PayPal is really cool because you can pay with debit or credit online uh, and, and uh, we can get those books out to you. Um, we've got a lot of uh, orders that have still been coming into our website for stuff that we have in stock, like, um, stuff like our, our uh, comic care packages, um, stuff like our variants and exclusives and stuff like that, um, that, that we have in stock on our website. And we've been, still been taking pre-orders on some stuff like all the Batman three Joker stuff, 
uh, that's all set to you know come out eventually when the taps get turned back on and the comics start flowing again. Um, so we're trying to keep it uh, as much to business as usual as we can without actually being open to the public. Um, so that's working out okay for us so far. Uh, and we thank everybody for their support and patience as we um, you know deal with all of that. Um, we're also currently getting ready our next round of comic boxer shipments. Those are set to ship out in the next couple days for April. Um, so we have uh, you know a few hundred people that participate in comic boxer each and every month, where they get a, a nice uh, five uh, comic bundle of mystery books that we've curated and sent directly uh, to the customers. Ricky, uh, yeah. since we're in a sharing mood today, would you like to see what <laughs> this month's comic boxer looks like? Even though. Yeah. Totally. I know that they, there's a special book in there for this month, right? There, there is. There's, I mean, there's there's always special books in Psychomic right. Boxer. Well, let's be clear about that. Uh, but, you know, uh, we haven't even shipped these ones out yet, but uh, we're, we're about to spoil it because these are crazy times that we're living in, and we want to show you some cool stuff. Uh, so we're going to show you what's in this month's Comic Boxer. Uh, now, the uh, deadline for signing up for this month um, has uh, the, the traditional deadline for signing up for this month has passed, but if you are interested in um, signing up, you know, within the next week or so, I, you know, I, we can make exceptions and make arrangements for uh, any of you guys to get these books that I'm about to show you. If, if that's what you're interested in um, these, uh, these comics, uh, I'm really proud of, of this, these, this month's selections. This will give you a good uh, example of, of, you know, the kind of things that we do with Comic Boxer. If you're interested in signing up at all, it's comicboxer.com. And I know this is one big long commercial for everything Stadium Comics related, but, uh, you know, we want to show you some books and some new and exciting stuff. So let's do that. Um, so first up we have uh, Immortal Hulk. Issue number 33, and this is the um, the variant for issue 33, which pays homage to um, the, the first uh, Hulk issue. Well, that's an homage cover that's not a stadium cover, stadium can comics. You, can you believe it? No, it's by Joe Bennett, who's been killing it on uh, some of the Immortal Hulk variants. Uh, we also have the Spider-Woman, um, J. Scott Campbell variant, which is... Thanks. Always awesome to see. Uh, I should say, if you don't want to be spoiled on this month's comic box, so you might want to skip ahead a few minutes, but you know, maybe it's too late for that. Hopefully, people who didn't want to be spoiled uh, take the hint. Um, Super Duck, number one, which uh, you know we showed you uh, in our first episode back. Uh, so this is a Stadium Comics exclusive variant by... Uh, Dan Parent, and extremely limited in number. It's only limited to a few hundred copies. Exo Manowar, number one. This is also a Stadium Comics exclusive variant uh, by Erica Henderson. We showed you this a few weeks back. Uh, super excited about this book and happy to include it as part of Comic Boxer. And last but certainly not least is a book from Action Lab Comics. And this is The Argus issue number one and you can see that little sticker there it means it's signed officially uh at stadium comics i've never uh, seen that before oh yeah it's new we've been doing that on the last few sign books that we've done and uh this was signed by the series writer mark bertolini great guy and uh actually i have to thank ricky for introducing us to mark um super super excited to have him as part of comic boxer and uh you know to promote the heck out of the argus issue number one it was a fantastic read and uh mark's really uh he's really on the rise isn't he he's doing a lot of great stuff yeah man like i see him post he's like oh i've written like 900 comic pages today and it's like what this is crazy man as a machine just... hashtag goals am i right ricky yeah, exactly. And uh, interesting story about getting him signed, isn't it, Kevin? You like dropped him off, and like all contactless. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we're in a, we're we're in a period of a pandemic, and things are different, and you know, we're not interacting with people. And we'd originally made plans for Mark to come by the store and and uh, sign all the books uh, at our at our physical location, and then um, 
Uh, you know, that was a few weeks ago as, as this pandemic was kind of developing. And then the next thing you knew, we were, we were shutting down and uh, I had to message Mark. And I said, Mark, listen, I really wanted you to come by and, and sign these, but um, uh, you know, <laughs> we're not going to be open to the public. So I don't think it's safe for you to come by either. We just get, you know, we got to maintain our social distancing, but uh, we'll figure something out. And then uh, us figuring something out was me basically going to drop off a box of comics on his doorstep uh you know messaging him saying hey the books are there uh and then coming back in a couple days and picking them up again off off of uh, the doorstep so uh, but we do have photo we do have photographic proof that it was in fact mark signing these and like he didn't just hand it off to like a you know a neighborhood nine-year-old uh who scribbled on these uh but i thought that was a really cool story he did sign them in his garage. I think he had gloves on too. So. He did. He did. He, he took did. extra special care to make sure that uh, you know there was minimal handling going on, and uh, you know he's uh, he was a really good guy about it, and uh, really really appreciate Mark. And you know when this is all over, we'll have to take him for a beer to to thank him for uh, for signing those for our for our customers. So that was awesome. Right, Ricky. Stand up guy, man. Stand up guy. Yeah. And in the newest cauldron, he's got a story in that. That's the uh, horror anthology that I am a part of. And Mark Bertolini's got a story in cauldron. So it's pretty nice. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's fantastic uh, at everything that he does. And I'm going to be sure to pick up anything by Mark uh, going forward in the future. And hopefully, all you guys out there will too. Um, so that's kind of what's going on at stadium. Uh, lots of stuff, you know, in the pipeline, uh, some live sales that we're going to be doing some different things with number one issues that you're going to see coming in the next little bit, some really crazy ideas of the things that we haven't tried ever before that uh, you're going to be seeing. Uh, so if anything, you know, what, what these interesting times, uh, is teaching a lot of comic shops right now. And I'm sure you guys are seeing it out on Facebook and social media. It's teaching a lot of comic shops. Uh, to be innovative. And that's really important during these times to ensure that, um, you know, that we can all uh, weather the storm here and come through it on the other side, uh, you know, better than, you know, how we went into this. And I think that that's going to be the outcome uh, for a lot of shops that are doing a lot of really cool things right now. Have you, have you seen anything that's like super interesting online in terms of, uh, you know, marketing comics or uh, sales of comics in the last little bit? Um, I don't know. I've seen a lot of like doom and gloom, that's for sure. But I don't think that that's warranted. But um, I know like in in like regular publishing, uh, you know, like prose books and stuff. A lot of authors are doing like live streams of, of them reading and stuff. And a lot of bookstores are trying to promote that and stuff. Um, I've seen Simon Schuster. They're promoting like their authors that do book club uh, like meetings. So if, if you're reading one of their books for a book club, you can get them the author to like Skype in or something. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. That's really good. I mean, it's oh, kind of yeah. hard to do with comics because you can't really have a writer read his comic. But, <laughs> you know, well, hey, maybe you can be the first. Maybe you can do like, uh, you remember when you guys used to do those dramatic readings uh, oh, yeah. for Flavorful, flavorful Sauce? Yeah, it's time yeah. to bring those back. Uh, we don't speak of five class anymore. Anyway, Ricky, I was going to ask, um, what is new with you? What are you up to? Um, you know, just at home a lot. It's boring as hell. Um, we just recently finished issue four of Undergrowth, so that's like just sitting there ready to be printed, but not printed yet. So we have to wait for that. Um, other than that, you know, working on more books, but it's tough, man. It's tough to be creative when the world's going to going crap. So I'm, uh, I'm trying to learn how to, to do it. Yeah. And I, I see a lot of people posting things like, um, you know, if we don't come out of this, um, pandemic and shut down with, um, you know, a whole bunch of new skills or courses that we've done or a whole bunch of stuff that we've been creative with, then, uh, then, you know, we, we wasted our time kind of thing. But I don't think that that's necessarily true. Stressful times for everybody. Everybody has their own, uh, you know, level of tolerance of, 
you know, what they're able to endure, you know, mentally. And, you know, uh, obviously with all the news and stuff on, on television and things changing every day and things getting worse and some things getting better and, you know, uh, people wondering yeah. about what, what, you know, how they're going to pay for their rent or for their mortgage or for, you know, for food mm-hmm. in the next few weeks. I think so, we can all be excused if, uh, if we don't come out of this, you know, having written the great, uh, you know, American novel or anything like that. Exactly. And it's one thing if, you know, they shut everything down and said, okay, in a month, everything will be back to normal. So have fun, you know, but they didn't say that. And that's not what's going on. And you just don't know what's going on. And it's a whole lot of like, what's the world going to look like after this? And you yeah. can't, you can't, you know, do anything while you're worrying about that. So it's a lot of uncertainty, man. A lot of uncertainty, too much. but you know, uh, we have to try to stay positive too at the same time and try not to let it drag us down too much. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll all get through it on the other side and we'll all be stronger for it. Right. So, uh, so undergrowth, undergrowth number four, that's the next big one, uh, from you. Uh, when, when do you think it's going to be ready for people to take in and read? Um, I don't know. I, hmm. I, well, I mean, the digital version's done now, right? But um, the the print version, I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, for Phoenix, <laughs> hopefully, Phoenix will still happen. Yeah, we'll have to see. That's the other thing, like conventions and stuff, right? What's what's yeah. happening with conventions? San Diego, that's not happening now. Uh, well, at least it's not happening when it's normally happening, and. Uh, a lot of shows got pushed back. Emerald City, Emerald City Comic Con was kind of like the first big one to, to you know, stop the Toronto Comic Con. Um, so it's uh, you know what, you know what happens even when we even when we come back from this and things start opening up again, how long before people are comfortable going into uh, a crowded convention center and being among all the other fans? Uh, to to enjoy everything comic related, right? A lot of questions, a lot of lot of questions that we don't have the answers to right now. But um, you know, we're it, we're gonna get there. The, the, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> my 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 fancy words of wisdom. Um, all right. So, would you like an industry update? Want to know what's going on in the comic book industry? How everybody's kind of coping with this? From the publication and distribution yeah, standpoint, all right. Sorry, so no sorry. new, no new, no new books again this week. Obviously, uh, Diamond Comic Distributors, uh, the only distributor of all of the comics that go to your local comic book shop, uh, they've shut down um, during the pandemic. Uh, they are uh, the main distributor, so there's nothing new. It's like April first books did not ship last week. Uh, and April 8th books will not be shipping. Now, from what I'm told, April 1st and April 8th books, for the most part, are at Diamond Comics, um, ready to be shipped when things get back to normal again. But they're holding on to it until shops can be open again and uh, can start selling books. Um, so there was a lot of worry when we filmed this episode last week because there was some news trickling down that Diamond... Uh, wasn't able to pay their publishers. So they, they were effectively stopping payments to the publishers. And everybody was saying like, oh, well, is this the end of Diamond? If Diamond's done, what happens? Like, how are, how are these books going to get out to the comic book stores once everything turns back on again? And uh, so since that time, the news has come out that uh, Diamond has come to a payment you know, arrangement with most of the publishers where they're going to pay, uh, you know, a portion of what's owed over the next little bit and defer some of the payments until a little bit later until they start getting income from stores sending them money to get new comics again. Um, So it sounds like that's all ironed out for the time being and Diamond has a plan to be up and running again once um, stores are allowed to open. Uh, you have any comments or questions about that, Ricky? Um, no, I mean, sucks. But what are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna do? That's just it. Uh, that's the reality that a lot of companies are having to deal with. Diamonds, a business uh, like every other business, it's dealing with having to lay off workers and having no income coming in. Uh, hopefully, um, 
you know, they like uh, a lot of the other businesses operating in the U S are able to apply for funding uh, to help them uh, deal with the loss of revenue during that time. And uh, you know, hopefully there's no ill effects from that, but uh, that's encouraging that they've come to a deal with the publishers and uh, things look like they're um, set to continue as normal. Once uh, we get to that point, um, the will they won't they in terms of publishers releasing, releasing digital books um, ahead of the printed version releases still kind of continues with DC and Marvel. Uh, everybody else has kind of stood firm with their commitments uh, to comic shops that they're not going to be releasing digital before the printed version. Uh, DC again this week went right down to the wire, uh, just announced today that um, the only thing that they'll be releasing digitally on Wednesday will be um, some original graphic novels. Uh, I think like there's a Gotham High original graphic novel that they'd always intended to release digitally anyway. Um, and uh, a couple other digital first books and um, some, you know, some graphic novels and, you know, collections and that kind of thing. So no new, um, you know, single issue comics from DC once again this week. Um, and nothing new from Marvel as well. So, I mean, that's good news for comic shops like ours. Obviously, um, you know, we don't uh, want the did, spoiled. Yeah, sorry, Ricky. Did Marvel, like, did they announce that even production of books have stopped? Like, they're not even, like, working on books? Yeah, they did. So um, a good chunk of production on Marvel storylines has ceased. And, of course, um that unfortunately affects a lot of the people, Ricky, that you and I know that, that are working in the comic industry for Marvel. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, we can all get back to work. Uh, I mean, that means that when, when Diamond is distributing again, we're, we're still not going to have books, right? Because <laughs> people are still going to make the books. I mean, not necessarily. Depends on where they were at in their uh, publishing schedule. We know that there's at least two weeks of books that are ready to go at Diamond, and who knows what else is ready to be printed um, at the printer. That, that I mean, that's another issue why Diamond had to shut down. The main printer um, for DC and Marvel, um, you know, were they, they were ordered shut down um, because of the crisis. So, um, you know, they very well m might have some some stuff that's ready to go um, that hasn't been printed yet as well. Um, and probably what you'll see is as things get rolling again, you might have um, a reduced amount of titles um, that are shipping uh, each and every week until everything kind of uh, gets rolling again. Because you probably wouldn't see, you know, just... Um, you know, like you flick a light switch and then boom, everything, everything hits the stores. Uh, you know, people are going to be dealing with their own personal financial situations uh, and stuff like that. And I think it's probably best to go with a uh, slow but steady, um, you know, flow of new product to the stores. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Again, this is all speculation and uh, we'll have to see what's decided when the time comes. Um, DC for its part has decided that they are going to pause, uh, work on any of their black label line, which, um, you know, um, has been pretty popular for them over the last couple of years. And, um, they've also temporarily at least put a hold on any plans for their generation five relaunch, which, uh, is kind of not surprising considering everything that happened with like Dan DiDio before all this madness happened. And I know Dan DiDio was a big proponent of the generation five thing. And, you know, maybe it's an opportunity for them to, you know, to take a step back and, and look at everything that they had planned for the latter half of 2020 and reevaluate uh, or tinker with it in some way to make it more suited to their new direction. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, the Black Label stuff is kind of its own universe, right? So uh, it almost feels like a vertigo within the DC universe. So it makes sense that they're going to pause that, you know, uh, because it's not like there's continuity that needs to flow into other books and stuff. It's like its own thing. 
know? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, pausing is not a cancellation. So um, I think that they're happy with the sales from the Black Label stuff. Uh, thankfully for you, Ricky, all that uh, Sean Murphy goodness and Curse of the White Knight, all uh, they, they, they completed that before uh, this okay. outbreak happened. <laughs> so, so you're good there. Um, so uh, anyway, again, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uh, worry out there, but uh, good news in the, in the fact that there's information flowing now. Uh, in terms of Diamond's plans to get back on track and publishers uh, all kind of seem to be on the same page right now. Uh, but there was one thing that happened, I guess, uh, on Wednesday, throughout the day Wednesday, last Wednesday, um, and there was one comic uh, shop. Well, you know, I hesitate to say it's a comic shop. There's a gentleman by the name of uh, Stu Colson who has a, a shop in New Zealand, and he runs um, a, a, a point of sale system for comic shops called comic hub and it's really highly rated uh amongst a lot of the comic shop owners that use it it's like an integrated point of sale system that also allows stores to uh, keep track of inventory and you know do their orders for their for their pull list members and subscribers and you know it, it interfaces directly with diamonds ordering system uh allows stores to like put their inventory online easily and it's a really 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 cool system um and you know uh, in the face of this crisis that we're facing and a lot of stores being unsure as how they're going to make ends meet with no income coming in from new comics uh, Stu and his team had the idea of um, making a watered-down version of Comic Hub available um, that would allow retailers, uh, comic retailers, to sell digital copies of new releases um, during this uh, downtime with the, with the idea that the digital sale would also get you a copy of the print comic. So kind of like the reverse of what we used to see with the Marvel uh, digital codes and all that kind of stuff, where you buy the Marvel book, you get the digital code with it free, and you can redeem the digital version and view it, um, as well as own the physical copy. So kind of like the reverse of that. Um, anyway, this, uh, this, this plan <laughs> was not met with a lot of fondness by the majority of comic book retailers. Um, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion on it either way. I can see both sides of the argument where um, if it's, a, you know, for stores that are really um, having trouble finding ways to make ends meet, that it, it could be a possible solution for them. Um, but anyway, uh, within, I guess, you know, 24 to 48 hours of the idea being announced and saying that they had publishers on board uh, to, to participate in it, the backlash from other retailers was pretty huge. Uh, a lot of people referred to it as a betrayal um, because, you know, it's, it's in a way it's promoting the use of uh, digital comics and um, I've always kind of thought that digital customers and, 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 physical comic customers are kind of two separate set of customers. Um, I don't know. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on that, Rick? Yeah, no, I agree. I think that the people who are reading it digitally are never going to read it physically. You know what I mean? And people who read it physically are never going to read it digitally. But I don't know. I think that was a cool idea. I don't see why people hated it so much. I think well, it's um, people, people, people saw it as, as like, uh, you know, he was accused of like prof, you know, profiteering on like uh, a very dire situation. And cause you know, you'd have to pay for the service. And I think it was a really low rate, like 25 bucks a month or something like that. I don't, I don't know the exact details. But uh, I really don't think that uh, this guy was in it looking to cash in on. Uh, I, I genuinely think he was trying to help people. Um, but, you know, um, everyone has their differing opinions on the best way to get through these times. And for a lot of retailers, it was, you know, digital sales is not a part of that equation. And I can certainly understand why. Um, but uh, it just kind of sucked that that um, the, the way that it went down. And I, I, I really believe that this guy was trying to help out and, you uh, kind of took a, a bit of a beating online for it so well, in anything to do with comics it always gets ruined so you know what? It <laughs> it's not true ricky no it's appropriate i mean comics can't have nice things comics can have nice things comics comics can have uh 
you know, issue number four of Undergrowth coming soon. It's not, and, nice. uh, <laughs> it's not a nice thing. Okay. I tried, Rick. I tried. Anyway, um, so a lot of innovative ideas coming out how to how to resolve, um, you know, the, the problem of shops making money during these times. Some of them are more popular with retailers than others. Obviously, uh, this was one uh, that uh, isn't going to go through for now. Uh, but we'll have to see what the future holds uh, over the next few weeks. Ricky, uh, we had a contest last week where we asked people what content are they consuming while they're in this period of self-isolation. Did you want to go over some of the answers? Sure. Uh, Victor said, I'm catching up with the true, with the Immortal Hulk and Conan the Barbarian, the Life and Death of Conan books. Uh and I just started watching War of the World season one. Uh, I didn't awesome. even know they did a War of the World season one. Is that? I didn't that... know either. Oh man, this sounds pretty cool. Um, but, but Immortal Hulk and Conan the Barbarian. This guy uh, seems to be speaking your language. Yes, uh, I, I know this isn't the same one, but the Conan the Barbarian written by Jim Zub that just came out pretty recently. Solid book. It's like. Is literally a D and D campaign, just like with Conan the Barbarian. Such Pretty a nerd. Good. Such yeah, a nerd. Can no, <laughs> uh, I said I recommend reading back issues or trade paperbacks? I started reading Batman R.I.P. written by Grant Morrison. It is a crazy roller coaster of a story with Batmite and Zurin uh, Batman. Um, oh, I mean, man. Grant Morrison writes is good, so you know what? Yeah. Batman IRP, that was that was a crazy, crazy time in the history of uh, DC Comics and Grant Morrison books. That was all around the same time as uh, Final Crisis and um, Batman IRP, and then the you know Return of Bruce Wayne, all that stuff. Oh insane, yeah, insane timeline. Bruce Wayne was pretty sweet because he was like he was like a pirate, and then he was yeah, like a, he was like in the prehistoric times and stuff, and. Um, Flatlander said, Flatland, a romance of many dimensions by Edwin A. Abbott is cool. Um, do you think he got his username from that book? <laughs> I was going to say, he must be a really big fan of uh, Flatland. Flatland, uh, I'm guessing it's a, it's a prose novel, maybe sci-fi related. Probably. I, I haven't heard of it, but I mean, romance of many dimensions sounds pretty exciting, so... I'm into I, could, I could have romances in multiple dimensions. Yeah, why not? That. Yeah. It's not really cheating if it's in another dimension, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the winner goes to Stiff Kittens, who says, I wish the reason for seeing you guys again was under better circumstances. I agree. Hopefully, you know, the things even out. But then they continue saying, I'm pretty much out of the comics game now due to money and space, but hoping the Batwoman omnibus will still come out. Also just bought the Bowie book by Mike Allred and at a glance, the art is amazing. Um, I mean, yeah, omnibuses are where it's at when you want to read a lot of comics in, uh, and save you some space, you know? So I think you're making the right move here with some omnibuses. And I'm such a fan of Mike Allred's art. I know, uh, I know it's not for everybody, but he's got like that pop art kind of style. Uh, no, no surprise that he's on a Bowie book. Um, man, Mike Allred, he's, he's awesome. I, I still love him for, um, his run on X-Force and Ecstatics way back. Uh, some of the most awesome books that I've ever read. Uh, Stiff Kittens, awesome, awesome, uh, work. And you will get a copy of Argus issue number one signed by Mr. Mark Bertolini. One of the only versions that are going to be made available outside of Comic Boxer. So congrats on that. If you could send your um, details over to info at stadiumcomics.com, we'll get this out into the mail for you as soon as we can. Awesome. Ricky, do you have a question for this week? Last week, you kind of you kind of dropped the ball. I had to come up oh, with something. Uh, uh, yeah, what I don't know. Yeah, I've been thinking, and uh, I got nothing. So do you, do you got something? <laughs> <laughs> um what is your favorite uh potato themed dish um Just yeah cool. if you could if you could uh dig ricky up out of the ground and peel him up 
and eat him, uh, what form would you, what form of potato would you uh, eat him as? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the solid mashed potato. You can't go wrong. You just add in a couple of couple little butters, a little uh, little bit of garlic. Ooh, can't go wrong. Yeah, if you're going to have mashed potatoes, you definitely have to have garlic mashed potatoes. Let's not kid around here. Um, I'm going to say, uh, you know, Ricky, you and I are both, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Canada. So we need to go with one of Canada's national dishes and say it's poutine. Uh. So some cut them up, fry them uh, as French fries, uh, pour some gravy and cheese curds over them, and yes. it'll be delicious. Would you? What would you say is like the best poutine you ever had? Do you have like a go-to? I, uh, yeah, like um, I had a, a chicken curry poutine, and uh, it was amazing. So it was basically your traditional poutine, and then over top of it, uh, just ch chicken curry dumped on it. And um, I also had a breakfast poutine once, which was um, poutine with cheese and gravy and then like scrambled eggs maple syrup bacon uh that was pretty awesome and uh also i had a thanksgiving poutine once which was poutine with like turkey gravy uh peas and stuffing um wow. and it was actually really good too uh so yeah i mean obviously i have a problem uh, <laughs> uh it was a long time ago in my younger days. Sorry? Was that all from Smokes Poutine? Uh, I think it was for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, maybe some crazy stuff. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes just the regular poutine's okay. If yeah. It's done right. Yeah. They make one of the best poutines, man. It's true. True. It is really good. Uh, when, uh, all right, Ricky. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, when I worked at Stadium, there was a New York Fries like right there. And uh, I would go all the time. And then I was like, man, I should really, like, not eat poutine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is one of the dangers of working in a mall is you have to uh, eat at the mall food court. Well, you don't have to, but invariably that's what ends up happening. Uh, well, that is it for this week's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week, assuming that there's no new comic shipping once again, which, uh, doesn't look like there will be, but, uh, we'll keep you informed as to what's going on in the world of comics and how the industry is dealing with the shutdown. And, uh, hopefully we'll have some other fun stuff to share with you and, uh, take care this week and enjoy reading whatever comics that you have in your house, catch up on some old stuff, order some exclusives from Stanium pre-order some books from your local comic shop. Um, even though nothing's shipping right now, show them some love or just send them a message and tell them, uh, tell them you said hi and tell them I said hi too. And Ricky. Yeah. Tell them the right. potato says hi too. <laughs> They'll be really confused, but, uh, probably, probably be pretty funny. Uh, take care everybody. Have a good one. See ya.